Welcome once again. It's your favorite program, the chapter a day, aka a card. On here, we create a King James Version audio Bible and we study the Word of God together. Of course, in the process, we also get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. Of course, it's a bright, beautiful Monday. The Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. It's the beautiful start of a week, and I'm sure your week started great. Mine has been awesome so far. I had a little time out. It was public holiday, so we went out and did a couple of things out of town, and it was good. It was a good outing, and now it's time for a chapter a day. Believe you me. It was a public holiday. I had a lot to relax about and stuff, but hmm, I was contemplating what I was going to be able to make it for a chapter a day. Can you guys imagine that? Yeah, we have those days. We have those days. We don't have it all figured out as some people think sometimes because I'm the one doing a chapter a day every single day. So it feels like, oh, princess has it all figured out. Her life is just going all perfect, pitch perfect and stuff like that. No, there's some days that I feel like I just don't want to do anything at all. I mean, like literally anything you know me not doing a chapter a day feels like a part of me is taking off my body but there are some days that it's really like i don't care but god always finds a way and i believe that is those prayers that you all are always making for me like in your little closets in your little times that you get you choose to pray for me and intercede for me and put me before god and say lord help princess lord give her the grace to keep doing what she's doing and some people just think like oh my god this girl you're so consistent i wish they knew i wish they knew that sometimes i also fight with consistency i also fight to actually be able to do it right to be able to get it right i fight it i have to fight it literally and god always sees me true so Today, we're going to be doing Psalms 123. Oh my God, I actually missed it. I think it has five verses or so. 
um i forgot to check that out and we also have to be sure that we're live so i need to verify my little um nephew is just doing me great he's doing me proud like what's that psalm 120 there sorry guys i i really didn't prepare that i'm so sorry i did it but i i wiped it out oh it has four verses but actually the verses are kind of like a little bit long so it was looking like it was long yes he has um four verses and that's really a short one and sometimes of course we always say that these short verses are the ones that are like super super loaded so we'll have to be here for a longer time than we normally presume or think we would be right so let's go let's go let's go let's go we hand over the session to god we do the birthday party we do the um bible we do the birthday party pray for the birthday people and then the bible party so let's get this party started father we thank you for this day that you've made rejoice and be glad in it we thank you for your mighty hand of provision protection guidance we thank you for all that you've done you're doing and you are still to do in our lives in the lives of our brothers sisters parents friends relatives and loved ones in and out of the nation lord we thank you because you're a faithful father we thank you because you're a good god lord we pray that it's going to be you and you alone that we've seen felt heard and experienced throughout this edition of a chapter a day today no one else lord i pray oh god that you're going to speak to your people in a very special way let your word be back to signs and wonders let them be restoration let them be recovery let them be enlightenment let them be guidance let them be direction lord let them be every good thing that can be for your children this day oh god father we just give you all the praise we give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it blessed be your holy name in all the earth you are god all by yourself there is none like unto thee there's none who can be compared unto thee amongst the gods who is like thee your glorious and holiness fearful in praises always doing wonders lord we pray oh god that today is going to be all about you the focus is going to be you jesus is going to be jesus 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 and no one else lord give us a mind and the hands of a learner to speak and write a word and season to the hearts that are weary and waiting cause us to be the ones to manifest to the Groaning nations that are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Eternal Father, because we know you always hear and answer us. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous Amen, Amen, and uh, Amen. So, guys, are you ready? It's birthday party time. Let's get to find out those who are in our birthday book. Okay, the first person is Mr. Brian McWright Afanyu. I got to know him through a mutual friend, you know, they were actually having this conversations and you know, I'm a comment, comment section person. So we're in the comment section and he's always the one making jokes and making fun, fun kind of stuff. And there's always a sense of humor in his comments and stuff like that. And I like that. That's a really, really nice way to learn. Like you learn through humor, through fun, through jokes and stuff like that. He was always the one making the jokes and the funs and all that kind of stuff. So that's how I got to know him. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Brand McRide Afanya. The next person is Prince Adekoya, Prince Adekoya Adedeji, a.k.a. DJ Sachs. So I got to know him on Facebook. He's somebody who loves God with a passion. He also plays the saxophone, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, he's just into music. You know that I love music and I love dancing. So any person who is kind of connected to any of those ministries, like can just easily get away with me. So yeah, we became very good friends. He's one of those persons who gets to encourage me on the things I do and supports my work. And of course, he's also doing a great work on social media. So you can get to check him out and thank me later. The next person is Mam Ogechi J. Anayel Okocha. That's the wife of my very good friend. I got to meet her sometime when I went to visit. And of course, they spoiled me kata. I mean, like, those all these delicious meals, the way I was welcomed. Like, you know that kind of red carpet reception? Oh, my God. Mam Ogechi, God bless you so much. I'll never forget that in a hurry. She's a very calm and composed person very friendly very welcoming like she has this like i mean this calm personality that is just so soothing like 
I really, really did enjoy my time there. God bless you, mom. And then the last but not the least is mom Clarice. Mom Clarice I actually got to know her through one of my younger sisters. We were kind of in the university together, but they were like my younger ones. You know, they were like, I think a class or two. No, I think a class or two are behind us. So, um, she's a very calm person as well. She has this really pretty smile. She's always laughing. Like she's just a very jovial person. And that's what I really, really loved about her. It was easy to connect with her. I love happy people. I love people who are very jovial and all that because I myself, I'm one of those happy people, those jovial persons. A lot of people see me and ask questions like, princess, do you have problems? Of course, as long as we're still on planet earth, we're still in this earth. The Bible says we're in the world and not of the world. There are things that are happening in the world that will give you the chills sometimes, that will give you, it will literally freak you out sometimes, but you just know that you're here but you're not of this place so you know that god is going to see you through you know that god is going to come through for you and then you just stick to faith and you keep moving so um says offenses must come they will come so you you can think that you go through this earth without having all those things they would happen as long as you're here on earth but your disposition to those things like how would you react? What What is going to be your reaction? Will your reaction be crazy as crazy as all the things are? Or will your reactions be godly? I keep telling us these things all the time. So for example, if I have a tube, like a cream tube, and I exert pressure in it, what am I going to get? I'm going to get cream out of it, right? It's going to be cream that's going to come off that place. It's not going to be any other thing, right? So I cannot say that, oh, I have Christ, and then when I'm under pressure, is things of the enemy that are coming out of me that's not true then i didn't have god if you have god when you're under pressure people when they put you under pressure when they exert pressure on you it should be god that should come out of you right it's what you have on the inside that will come out whenever pressure is exerted on you so when pressure is exerted on you and you're reflecting some other person you're not reflecting jesus you're not reflecting the god person that you say you are then you don't have him you don't have it so let's not get it twisted that's up and straightforward let's take that again happy birthday to you mr brian mcbride afanyu happy birthday to you prince adekoya G, aka dj Sachs, and happy birthday to mom ogechi j anayel okocha and happy birthday to mom clarice Let's get to pray for the birthday people and then we step right on to the Bible party. Our Bible party, like I said, is taken from the book of Psalms 123 and it has four verses. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born today, O oh Lord. We pray that you open the windows of heaven and pour out the chests of your blessings upon their lives and rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. Let their gifts make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and war changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, wherever they set their feet upon, you give it to them as a possession. Lord, whatever they lay their hands on, you're going to prosper it. It's your word. We come claiming and holding on to your word because we know your word is true. Your word never fails. Your word always accomplishes the purpose for which it is sent. It never goes out and comes back the same. It always accomplishes everything that it is sent to do, O oh God. So we know that your word today is going to accomplish your purpose in the lives of those ones who were born today, O oh Father. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to bless them tremendously, O oh God, in ways beyond their reasonable understanding. Let these blessings encompass them as a shield run about, so no weapon formed to fashion against them shall press by, and any tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn. Father, I pray that you perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sound 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, rejoicing, jubilation, celebration, so that if you tarry to come, they'll be here same time next year, testifying of all the awesome such things that you do in their lives, because this is going to be their best birthday yet. <coughs> Lord, we pray, O oh God, that your part is going to keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to help them, O oh God. Open their eyes to see those they are supposed to be destiny helpers to. So they'll strategically position themselves to help these people. And also strategically position their destiny helpers all around them to help them when the time is right. So when they also cry out for help, help is going to be made available. 
Lord, I pray, oh God, I am going to teach them all that it takes to not only get to the top, but get to the top and stay there permanently. You are the master strategies. Only you can teach them the techniques and the ways that are necessary and needed for them to be able to get to the top. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to help them, oh God, to be able to stand out and not fit in. That as they keep fulfilling purpose and going where they have to go and doing what they have to do, they might get to a point where they feel overwhelmed. They feel like they want to give up or back out. They'll hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way walk thou needs. They'll walk on that path. They'll not stray. They'll not drill. And after it all, all glory will be given unto your holy name. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you. We give you all the praise, O oh God. Write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, even as they open today. Lord, we are forever grateful. We seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. Favor meet favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are forever grateful. We say thank you. We appreciate you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. Blessed be your holy name. How excellent is your name Angela, all a the earth, oh Lord. Woman. You are faithful. Lord, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for being a faithful father. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this one, so God. Take preeminence, both now forevermore, because you deserve it. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous amen, amen, and amen. But you guys know that I love to do different, so I sing the amen. Amen, 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 amen. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives, amen. I see a prayer. Amen. Let it be in the last seal the prayers. Amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus, amen. Let it be so. Amen. In the last, I should pray. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their life, amen. I should have prayed. Amen. Let it be in the last. Come on, come on. Amen. Let it be in the last. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Let it be. In the light. God bless you all tremendously. And may you fill your bags with all good things. Enlarge your course and do for you that which no man can do. I always get to say I love you so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, guys. Happy birthday to you all. I'm excited to have you on here. If you're just stepping in, God bless you. We always start with singing any gospel song, any gospel song at all. It could be Thanksgiving, it could be praise, it could be worship, it could be um, um, vows we we're making to God. It could be appreciation. It could just be like any single thing, but strictly gospel. Oh, yeah. So, yes, we are on, we're live. It's time for the Bible party. Time for the Bible. Bible. Time for the Bible party. Are you guys ready? It's just four verses. Let's get ready. Let's get prepared. Let's get ready. Ready? Psalm 123. Unto thee lift I up mine eyes. O that thou dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of sevens. Look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, until that he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease, and with the contempt of the proud. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say a ginormous thanks be to God. So what did you learn, guys? What did you learn from this? Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O that thou dwellest in the heavens. Um, lifting up your eyes to God doesn't mean like you should not look up like a bow like that. <laughs> no. It, it it's not the literally sense of it it's basically like 
dependent on God. You're depending on him. You're looking up to him for anything and everything. Because there are some times where the tendency is we're looking to people. We're looking up to other people. We're looking up to maybe our parents, maybe our brothers and sisters. For whatever reason, sometimes we tend to want to depend on people rather than on God. So when it says, unto thee, lift I up mine eyes, it's not literally in the sense of it like it's not li literally looking up in the heavens like you know looking up to god it's actually some some sort of you saying that you pledge your allegiance to truly trust and depend on god to look up to god every single time you need something every single time you you want to do anything you're looking up to god like i love how david always did it one minute he's about to go to war and he's asking god should I? And then the next minute he wants to go to war. He was a man of war, right? So you'll be thinking like, why would I need to be asking God over and over and over? I'm a man of war. If if I need to go, I just need to go to battle. But no, one minute he's asking God. And the funny thing is that one minute God is telling him, go, you shall overtake, you shall defeat and you shall recover all. And the next minute God is telling him that you ain't going nowhere, darling. That's how serious it gets, people yeah that's how serious it gets so we really need to be dependent on god totally and completely dependent on god and when we're totally and completely dependent on god god will do marvelous things with us for us around us in us through us and with us yes we need to trust god like that we need to really really get to that place where we really trust god we truly depend on god sometimes we say it with our mouth that yes i depend on god i trust you lord i rely on you you're my father you're my everything but our mouths are saying one thing and our hearts are saying a different thing our mouths are saying one thing and our actions are saying a different thing it doesn't work like that it doesn't work it cannot work like that we have to get our mind and our heart and our body and soul and spirit to sink to whatever we're saying. So if we're saying we love you, Lord, we depend on you, we trust you, that should be what our body, souls, and spirit are doing, showing that we love God. You know, um, there's always action after the profession. Even Jesus himself, even God himself, who is the creator of all the universe, he says, for God so loved the world. And what was the next thing he gave? Action. So his words were not going to be contradicting his actions. But some of us, ain't that, ain't that what we do all the time? We're saying something else, but we're doing something else. Someone is saying, I love you, and they're stabbing you in the back. Somebody is saying, oh my God, this generation needs help. We need cleansing. We need deliverance. Most of us will become so used to saying things we cannot do. We say, we expect people to do what we say, but not what we do. Why? Why? Jesus was a perfect replica of whatever he was saying. Whatever he was saying was what he was doing. And the disciples followed suit. And why? that's why the unbelievers, it's unbelievers who gave them names Christians. They call them Christians. Why did they call them Christians? They said they saw that these ones have been with Christ. How did they see? It's by their fruit. Some people say, no, Christianity is a matter of the heart. If it was a matter of the heart, then we would not need to be looking. God would not need to tell you that by their fruits you shall know them. Are fruits inside a tree? Fruits of a tree are always outside a tree. And for some interesting reason, God made it possible for us to only be able to see the outside. We can't see the inside. Only he can see the inside. So you cannot say Christianity is a matter of the heart. No, when the heart has been touched, when the heart has had an encounter with Christ, it will start manifesting on the outside. Oh yeah. So a lot of us will go on with do what I say, but not what I do. How is that even possible? How is that supposed to be? The people were called Christians because they saw what they were doing. They were doing exactly what God was saying and doing. Jesus was saying what he was saying and he was doing it. He was not just saying it, he was saying it and leaving it. That's why scripture expects us to be living epistles read of men. Right? And it says, Behold, as the eyes of the servants look unto the hands of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hands of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, until that he have mercy upon us. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, they're giving us a clear example. That's the good thing about God. He was always giving us, even in the old, when he's doing all these parables, he gives us things that are normal to us so that we can easily relate. Of course, you know how a, a slave is dependent on their master. You know how a maiden is looking up to their mistress. We all know, right? We know you're looking up to even employees. You know how employees look up to their bosses. <laughs> you don't want to do something stupid. You, you ain't going to get paid. <laughs> you ain't going to get your remunerations. You don't want to joke about it. You want to do the right things. You want to do what you have to do and how you have to do it. Because you know you have to get your remunerations. Or you have to get your salary or something. You don't want to get... You don't want to get to offend your boss. You don't want to get to offend your master. You're always looking up to them because you know that your livelihood or your, like they are your source, basically. Somehow, your livelihood is coming from them. They're the ones paying your salary. They're the ones taking care of you and stuff. It's the same thing. Our source is God. So our eyes wait upon him, we're looking up to him, we're trusting, we're depending in faith, we're relying on him, we're taking those steps that he wants us to take, taking the bold steps that he wants us to take. And it says, have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. <laughs> Sometimes you wait and wait and wait and you start getting irritated. Sometimes you wait and wait and wait and you start getting mad. Like, God, what is going on? I remember watching a movie. I've forgotten the title of the movie, but it was really nice. I watched it, I think, yesterday or two days ago. This guy kept praying. Until at some point I was saying that maybe it's because he's not grateful. I saw everybody around him saying, thank you, thank you, Lord. They were really like appreciating god and stuff like that but he was not really appreciated every time he just kept saying what about me what about me oh the title is what about me i think he was saying what about me what about me it's a mount zion movies you guys know me that i'm a mount zion freak so it says what about me and i was like why is he not praising god every time he's going to god i don't see him grumbling because the oh, the opposite thing of not being grateful would have been that he's grumbling or he's complaining you know, but he wasn't complaining. He wasn't complaining. He wasn't grumbling, but he wasn't e thanking God either. So I thought originally that was a problem, but then it got to a point where God told him he was almost giving up. He was almost about giving up. And then his daughter pleaded with him and pleaded with him until they went and they were praying. And while they were praying, that was the time of his visitation. See, there are some things in your life that no matter how, whether God has promised you or not, if God has promised you those things, it doesn't necessarily mean that the things will manifest. It said the vision is for an appointed time. Though it may tarry, it shall come to pass. That is the truth. So some people might pressure you into thinking that something is wrong with you. I've been there, done that. There are times where people will talk to me and talk to me and I'll go back to God and I'm like, Lord, am I lazy? Am I just being nonchalant? Am I not doing the right thing? Lord, you please have to help me. Because yes, when they talk to you so much, you begin to think that you're truly doing the wrong thing. But you just have to be in the place where God wants you to be and be serving him and be doing what he wants you to do. People will not get it. You know why? It is not their vision. God has given you the vision and the mission. And he's going to ask you as an individual. I gave you this assignment. What did you do? I gave you the, the, the requirements and everything that was needed for the assignment. What did you do? I gave you five talents. What did you do? I gave you two talents. What did you do? You're not going to be able to start saying that, oh, my father did this. My mother did this. And no, no. And that's why no matter how people try to pressure you and all, if you know what God has said to you concerning you, if you know the assignment God has given you, stick to it, my daughter. Stick to it, my sister. Stick to it, my, my, my son. Stick to it, my brother. Stick to it, my mom. Stick to it, my father. Stick to it, oh. Ha. Hey, don't let the, your emotions get the best of you. Because sometimes you would really feel like you're alone. You really feel like nobody gets you. Believe you me, even super spiritual people will not get you. You know why? Because it's not their mission. It's not their vision. 
God gave it to you. And so he's expecting you to be able to live up to it because he knows that he cannot give you something that is above you. And even if he does, he'll give you a way of escape. That's what the word of God says, right? So God will never give us something that is above us to be able to do. And so he's giving you that mission. He's giving you that assignment. You have to carry out that assignment. Though. You cannot afford to fail. Ah, you cannot afford to fail. No way. No way. No way. You cannot afford to fail. You will not have any excuse. You, it, when God will show you, it will be so clear that you, you will know that you really had no excuse. So those excuses that we're trying to give just to pacify our consciences, it's not going to help us. Though. It's not helping you. You need to get to a place where you're honest with yourself. You tell yourself the truth. You tell yourself the honest things that are. You tell yourself how real this thing is and, and, and keep it real. Keep it real with yourself. The worst person to lie to is yourself. You can't even lie to God, so don't even bother. The worst person to lie to is yourself. And so you have to wait. You have to wait upon God even till the end, even to the uttermost. They say that the people of old, the people in the Old Testament, they held on to the promises that God had given to them until they died without seeing it. Why here? Why even experiencing it is manifesting in our generation. Why experiencing the manifestation of promises that some people held on to those promises and they died without even seeing the promises. They died without even man the promises manifesting. God made a promise to Abraham. It manifested after 25 years. You think 25 years of waiting is chocolate? <laughs> God anointed David king. They anointed him. He was already anointed as king. It took him 17 years to get on the throne. He was even exiled from his country at one point in time. He was a fugitive. Joseph had a dream just shortly after having the dream. Oh my God. This guy had to go to one wala to the other, to the other, to the other. And none of them was looking like anything connected to what he was doing. But the truth is, under those guys of those things that were happening, there was leadership. If he sat there and grumbled, he had every right to grumble. He had every right to be angry. People were lying about him. People were getting him in trouble for something he knew nothing about. People were selling him off for just being himself and all those kinds of things. He had every right, humanly speaking, to be irritated or to be angry. But no, he wasn't. So what's your disposition? Child of God, these things are going to happen to you. But your disposition, your reaction to the things, your reaction is what matters. How are you reacting to the things that are happening to you? How are you reacting to the challenges that are coming your way? How are you reacting? Are you being frustrated? Are you being angry? Are you being bitter? How are you reacting? It's important. He says, Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how proud some people can be, right? They'll come here and they'll tell you like, um, they'll go on like, look at you. You say you're serving God. See your life. Like, what are you talking about? You know, the way proud people can make you, they can literally make you lose your self-esteem. Believe me, some of those, there are things there. Um, some people are just insecure like that. And they will make you feel like you have a problem. Some people are just comfortable making you look small so they feel big. They feel big and feel good about themselves by making others feel bad about themselves. So don't let that get to you. Don't let these people get to you. It's not worth it. Proud people. Hmm. They can make you think like you are a nobody. They, they might make you think like... God made a mistake creating you and bringing you on earth. But unfortunately for them, God did not make any mistake creating anybody. The Bible says before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you to be an encourager. I knew you and I ordained you to be my daughter. 
I knew you and I ordained you to be my son. I knew you and I ordained you to be the one who is going to be doing a chapter a day today. God had already known this a long time ago. If not now, it was long ago. He had predestined and preordained that princess at this time, this season, this year, this month, you're going to be doing a chapter a day. You're going to be at this level. You're going to, oh my God. Oh my God says i created you to be a solution to this problem a solution to the people who are diluting the word of god you're going to be a solution to bringing the undiluted word of god to the world god knew this so no 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 don't let any freaking person deceive you don't let anybody make you feel less of who you are mm -mm. you were created for a purpose you were created as a solution to a problem. You better believe that. Believe it for your own good. And live to the expectations. God didn't get the one beautiful day and he was just bored. And he felt like he just wanted to do something and then he just created you. So, oh, out of boredom, God created you. So now you're just useless. No. It says, after creation, God says, and it was good. Everything God created. It's good. So do not let anybody tell you otherwise. Do not let anybody make you feel less of that. Proud people might want to do whatever they want to do. It's just them. You need to know. What you need to know is to study the word of God and know what God is saying concerning you. Because that's easier. When you study the word of God and you know what God is saying concerning you, whatever any other person is saying is just... You trash it. If it doesn't fall in line with what the word of God has said concerning you, trash it. Trash it. And if possible, avoid such people. You're not obliged to, to still stay in their lives. You're not obliged to be around them. You're not obliged to be friends with them. You're obliged to love them because Christ loves everybody. But you're not obliged to be friends with them. You're not obliged to be connected like connected to them. But you're supposed to love them. Yeah. You're supposed to love them. That's how it is. So people, people. Do not, do not fret. Do not be afraid. Do not get worked up. Do not live your life based on what some people are saying. Because some people will make you feel so bad. Some people will make you feel like. Your life is a waste, like you're a nobody, like what are you even talking about? Do not let them get the best of you. You are created for a purpose, a unique purpose. You are created in the image and likeness of God, child of God. Don't let anybody make you feel different. Okay? So yes, this is where we're wrapping up with the chapter idea for today. I hope you all will have a great week. I hope you all are going to have an amazing and an awesome time. I did have a great Monday. And of course, it's almost sleep time. So you all keep enjoying, keep supporting, keep sharing. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates. Each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. It has been your favorite girl, Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> we have our audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and the newest is Instagram. Go on there, follow us, and get blessed and get transformed. We always get to say we love you, you know, but God loves you way more. So today we're going to be praying that God should help us so that we are going to keep studying the word and know what he has said concerning us and not listen to what people are saying concerning us because it's what god says concerning us that stands It's what god says concerning us that is the most important and the best so let's pray father we thank you o lord for your word we know that your word is true your word is here and amen we know that all the promises are in your word for us they are true that yea, they're certain so lord help us O god 
increase our zeal to study the word increase our zeal to want to know you more god the more we study the word the more we want to know you and the more we know about ourselves so that no one is going to make us feel less of who we are no one is going to make us feel like we do not belong no one is going to make us feel like we're useless oh god because your word tells us exactly who we are to you and who we are to the world because you created us oh god father we say thank you we truly appreciate you from the depths of our hearts we do not take it for granted for all that you've done for us you're doing and you're still to do lord we are forever grateful we give you all the praise we give you all the glory we give you all the honor all the adoration because you deserve it thank you lord god for your faithfulness for in jesus name we pray and all the saints shall say ginormous amen right now i am leaving you to prepare for tomorrow and for the next chapter by the grace of god if we can if Christ tarries to come. We'll be here tomorrow doing Psalms 124. So let's get to study together. Study before time. So when you come back here, we're going to have a spectacular time studying this together. I always say I don't want this to be a monologue. I want it to be a dialogue. So you guys have to also be talking, man. Like you guys are leaving me to do all the talking. That's not fair. That ain't fair, people. That ain't fair. So I need you all to also go ahead and participate and keep the comment section on fire. If you desire, you can request to come live as well. And we're going to put you on so that you can be a part of a chapter a day. We can actually ascribe a face to the name. And that will really be a beautiful thing. Lord, we thank you, God, for this amazing session of a chapter a day. We thank you for always giving us the best of the best. Lord, we appreciate you, oh God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in us. Lord, help us not only to be doers, not only to be hearers of the word, but to be doers only also because blessings come in doing the word. And doing the word is much more important than just hearing it. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to help us to be able to live up to expectations. And you're going to give us the grace, you're going to guide us, you're going to help us through it. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Bless the days of those who are just starting up and bless the remaining part of the days of those who are halfway. And Lord, let's dream dreams and see visions for those of us who are about to sleep. You give your beloved rest. Let's have a sound rest even as you fight our sin and unseen battles. Thank you, Lord God, for winning in our favor. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say, Jainomas, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Mwah, 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 mwah. Bisous, bisous. Je vous aime.